And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, coming to us straight from Wendigo Workshop, creators of Arkelion Chronicles, which is still on the way, as well as the as well as a few other projects, chiefly among us tonight, the Caltrop Core Magical Girls project known as Last Hope, not to be confused with the Star Ocean game, the one and the one and only Jonathan Savigny. How you doing today, man? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sick a bit, but I'll, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm reminded of of something my own man would always say it would always say about being sick. You can, you can take you can take all the medicine in the world and get over a cold in a week, or you can take none of it and get over it in seven days. Yeah, <laughs> I mostly sleep all day for now. It it helps a lot. <laughs> um, I wish I had, I wish I had it so lucky whenever I, whenever I get sick because my brain doesn't let me sleep. You know the whole the whole hey wake up think about this. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes you're so tired that it just it just works. <laughs> you just collapse. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, for for me, it's just, for me, it's just a case of I'm a I'm a workaholic by trade. So yeah, but, I I can't understand that. <laughs> but um, now with um with last hope, I since we've already gone through the humble beginnings the last time I had you on for Arkelion. I'd instead like to pivot toward, um, how, toward first off, how you ca how you came across Caltrop Core. Um, well, I've been following the creator on Twitter for a long time. Um, so when they released the SRD, I I just knew it was there, but we didn't really have time to do anything with it um, because we were extremely busy. So like when a little bit of less um when you had less work on the plate and had to send the Archelon um documents to another writer, uh we took the time to just have fun and make a little game to just change um just have some change and um cultivate a little bit of um imagination and game design just to have a little bit fun and do something else than Archelon, which we've been working on for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd say I'm guess I'm guessing part of, I'm guessing part of the appeal was to do some do something a little bit crunch light, given how crunch heavy your main project is. Yeah, that too. We wanted to do a little something a little bit more simple to uh, still have some. Um, some options and give some stuff for players to have choices and have unique, like uniqueness to their characters, but have something more simple than what we were doing as uh, as a main game. Mm -hmm. Now, just for, just from the description alone on the game's itch.io page, I'm guess I'm guessing that. And if this was if this was outright name dropped and I mi and I missed it, I apologize. But I'm guessing one of the big inspirations was Madoka Magica. Yes, like one of the different games that we in uh, not games but uh, magical girl shows that we inspired ourselves uh, from. We we did have a bit of like uh, Sakura and other other. Um, shows too but i guess madoka is a big inspiration <laughs> would just uh, just based on the way, just based on the way a lot of the pages are designed 
was Persona also an inspiration? Um, Persona Five, especially. Yes, that's that's another inspiration uh, that we had mm-hmm. when making like the game and uh, trying to like put together something that allowed uh, a little bit like a Persona to have uh, like school days and try to find some balance between uh, like fighting things and just role playing during like school parts. Yeah. I especially see I especially see that kind of thing with how the visuals are set up. It definitely reminds me of that um that that monochrome comic book style that we saw throughout the art with Persona 5. Um one of the other things I find I find kind of interesting is that with the magical girl type that you have, it's almost reminiscent of a playbook in powered by the apocalypse was that one system that you got that you guys had considered early on until you settled on Caltrop, or was is that just coincidence i think there's a part of yes like a coincidence but we also have um um we have read a lot of like thirsty sword lesbians and we like the idea of like having some playbooks and things that are specific uh, to like each character's like like you said the playbooks. Um, but to me, it makes it easier for new people to just really dive into the game without complicated character creation parts. So like it's not completely uh, inspired by powered by the apocalypse, but. I like the idea of um, having specific like types of characters that you can play uh, to make it easier for people to like know what the characters do mm-hmm. instead of having like complicated uh, character creation parts. Yeah. Um, and I also, I also, admittedly, do find it interesting that. For the physical side of things, the non-beyond part, you ended up creating, because you end up, unless I'm mistaken, creating a whole, creating a whole new, di- whole new district. Because unless I'm mistaken, Horobara isn't a isn't a pro- in, isn't a place proper. No, it doesn't exist. Um, we we have written in the game that if people really know, uh, have like really extensive knowledge of like the different district in, in Japan or anywhere else that they can use it but for people that don't really know anything about it like we just created a whole city for for the game so it's simpler for people and they don't have to do like research on what is in Japan and where mm-hmm. and uh, with that with that in with that in mind when it comes to when it comes to the whole when it comes to the whole um da- the whole um active time and downtime s- um cycle um in some of the campaigns that you've done in testing the game did you ever write it out like a like a schedule to kind of get to kind of guide how you'd set it up yeah we since the uh, day part is a bit like a not a schedule but a little bit like there are some times, uh, usually we try to put it um, some not a calendar, but like um, write the time of day and just uh, write what the characters would do, and then we would role play depending on if characters are together, if they're not, uh, if one person wants to role play with some NPCs and try to like know someone at school or outside of school. Um, I mean that's how we played, but there's probably a ton of different ways mm-hmm. to play the game. And something else that I something else that I did I did notice when it comes to like when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the moves for lack of a better term for for each magical girl type. Um Obviously, obviously, with a lot of them, you're using most of them. You're using two and some sometimes three, um, soul 
i.e., M a MP, in yeah. order to d in order to um activate that ability. In for for you, what for you, what what was was there a kind of I guess guideline for what what would be what should cost one soul versus two souls or three? Um. Yeah, we tried to like. Um... Like we we wrote all abilities that different uh, characters and type of uh, magical girls that later on like the moves that you can uh, select when you level up, um, and usually we try to put two points for like a more generic uh, and simpler way, but uh, when an ability felt stronger. Uh, or more useful or difficult, like for example, uh, summoning a creature or um, a large healing uh, or big damage or things like that. We put it a little bit more expensive, and on the contrary, if it was a little bit more simple to use or less strong, like we had it cost a little bit less, just to be sure that people just don't. Uh, don't die because their ability are too expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, like we try to put some sort of uh, way to have people think about which ability they want to use, but not make them also expensive that you can you don't feel like you can use them um, efficiently. Especially since whenever you it, whenever you put in a limited resource within within a game. There is a tendency for players to be very conservative with that resource. Yeah. Um, what I like to call the rainy day paradox or the 99 megalixer paradox. I think I mentioned this to you before. The whole very probably. Well, you're at the boss fight and some and somebody's going, "I can't use one of my 99 megalixers. What if I need it for later?" <laughs> yeah, that that's a thing that happened pretty often and that's that's why we decided to have all resources always regenerate when you leave, like this other world, just because people don't have to hold on to these resources that much. Um, like, they can use it and just leave, and they, they will gain them back. So it, it's not as conservative as maybe uh, the spell slots in d d or uh, other magic system like mana points or however it's called in different games um even if it call even if it calls it something else um i'm still going i'm still going to call it M mp because well if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck and quacks like one it sure as hell ain't a goose yeah <laughs> um i've even i've even done that with exalted even though it's supposed to be essence like it's mp it's mp no matter how much you how much you want to claim otherwise it it is yeah, I mean, it was more for flavor, like, that we called it otherwise, but it, it works quite the same. Yeah. Um, it's for the same reason that I that I use the term extra effort um, resource, even even if it doesn't call it that. Because, as I mentioned to you before, every... I won't say every game, but a lot of games have some sort of extra effort um, resource, yeah. and it looks like... Um, La last hope is no ex is no exception in the form of determination. Yeah. Um, I hope to get. I'm pretty sure just having determination as a resource, I get the feeling somebody has brought up Undertale to you. We played Undertales, uh, but um, we we mostly wanted to like find a name that would fit uh, the like the the whole concept of the game and it's kind of the one that we found fitting to what it was doing and to the whole setting of the game mm -hmm. but maybe it was inspired a little bit by undertale somewhere in the process yeah creation doesn't come out of a vacuum <laughs> there's al there's always going to be the there's always going to be something that come that that where it cut where it comes from and i will freely admit that I, that i will always have an interest in the um in the in 
the in the set not the setup but the path um but i think the other reason why i was reminded of um of playbooks is how advancement works with the with the diff with the different per with the passive perks and and um special moves yeah there was uh, as i said before like some sort of still inspiration from playbooks because it makes it easy for people to quickly know what they're doing mm -hmm. instead of like uh like in D D be confused by three million abilities that they have <laughs> and then that are sometimes unclear or how to create characters so we wanted to keep it a little bit uh, simpler for like newer people and uh, we wanted to use Caltrop core mostly because the d4 is the unloved dice that nobody likes <laughs> so well, it I was know, fun to uh, I know that I know that some of the people who've lived with me don't don't like it but that's be, uh, that's because of the time I rigged the kitchen I put six pounds of d4s on the kitchen floor that were all that were all white so they blended in with the tiles to keep people from <laughs> from stealing food late at night i mean if it works <laughs> well i asked them not to a couple times and that didn't work so i had to do something drastic but if it works it works oh besides no better teacher than pain now with that, with that in, with that in mind, um, I know you. I know you wrote out that it that the cap is technically at ten, but you can go further. Th you can go further than that. In playtesting, have you had any moments where you've gone past ten, or has that not been the case? We tried to keep it at ten because we wanted to make a game that were wasn't. Lasting for four years uh, for a campaign, so we try to like make it a little bit easy to like gain level and have progression. Mm. But we we still try to go a little bit beyond that. It it works, um, like it does work, but it becomes more crunchy, of course, because you have more, uh, you have more abilities, you have more like points, you have more everything, um. So, like, the more uh, beyond level 10 you go, of course, you have more um, more crudge to the game, I guess, because there's more options for you to use. And one of the... One of the when it comes to Magical Girl types, um, and, and I'm curious, because of the fact that when doing this sort of genre emulation, there's a lot of ways you can go about this as somebody who's dabbled in trying to do something common writer inspired so what was what was the design ethos you had when it came to the development of each of them as um hearts it was uh we thought about like what would uh like fit in like the some sort of cute magical girl way like what it would be um, and like heart is uh, something that we thought would fit for um, like it's your personality that determines what you will become so it's like your your heart I guess like how good or of a person you are or how uh, like depending on how how you are as a person so we thought like heart would be something that fit quite well mm -hmm. into this whole setting of like personality that determines uh which type you are which type of magical girl you become when you transform mm -hmm. oh i'm i'm guess although i could i get the feeling that because of the em because of the emblem designs which i actually like in in the setup um i can it's definitely a case of your your um pre your previous work and your wow and your wow background is still showing. 
<laughs> but has anybody has anybody assumed certain elements just based on the col just based on the color schemes of these? Because I could I could see some people making that assumption. They could like that it's inspired by. Um, we we try to make each uh, like different colors because it was easy to see. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the problems that we came across is that uh, the font that we are using in most of our like uh, writing because it's easy to read, but there's one thing that is not, and it's um, like when it's in bold, it doesn't show. So the the reason why we put different colors everywhere is because we really wanted people to be able to quickly see what each thing is we're doing and what you have to roll. Um, so that that's quite why there's a lot of color everywhere and different um, like different colors and things like that everywhere because we really wanted to have it easy to see and easy to gather information in text. Mm -hmm. And I will I will admit when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to um when it comes to corruption, that's that's the other reason why I'd be curious about that kind of um defend that kind of defensiveness due to due to the due to the fact that when using soul points you end up getting you end up um getting corruption so have, have there been have there been cases where some people have been really really conservative about using using soul because of that some were but that's why we try to create a lot of abilities that restored corruption or removed it uh, depending on like during the day you do some activities and it remove it or like one character type can heal it, so people don't need to be as conservative um, of their resources because there's way to cleanse it. Um, but some people were, <coughs> but other weren't and didn't really care. <laughs> uh, like we we had like people dying because they didn't really care, but it's okay. It happens. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes, what would you say were some of the big learning experiences that you had with playtesting? I think one of the the the, the fun part, I guess, but like, um, a thing that I personally enjoyed was. Um, playtesting a game that was simple to other to like set up and play like it's not very complicated and it's quite different from when we are testing Archelon where there's a lot of things to think about and create and things like that so it, it was very different to playtest something that is um, that is like simpler I guess um, most of the things are pretty straightforward, like, uh, you, you go through your day, you go fight some things, and then you rinse and repeat, so it's quite easy to, uh, play through the game as opposed to, like, more crunchy and big games, so it was fun to, and quite a learning experience to try to edit and make a game that is more simple, um, mm -hmm. overall. Now, with that with that in mind, I I know there was an up I know that there was a update not too long ago, but um, looking at looking at the current state of the thing, what would you say are some of are some of the things that in your mind could be improved upon with with um the current state of Last Hope? Um, it's sure that we want to improve like uh having a little bit more options for players. Um, and adding more monsters, uh, like more um, 
monsters idea and samples because they're they're just one for now um and we want to go through again maybe some typos and things that have probably slipped um our eyes when when we wrote it um and probably add like something that we want to improve pretty much is um add some links to uh reach pages faster and easier uh that's the thing that we have you that we usually do with our pdfs um and that's the thing we want to improve like have easier access to like all chapters um and have it easier for people to wonder their book mm-hmm. <sighs> and with and with that in with that in mind um have have you got has is there an is there any is there any has anybody you know of done like done like an actual play or anything, or anything like that of the system or has that not happened yet um it hasn't happened yet i think there's one person that was setting up to do one uh in some close like near future uh but it didn't happen yet as an actual play um but I know there's someone that wanted to do it um, in the far or near future. Um, we will maybe do one eventually when we have more time uh, on our hand uh, because it's something that we, we want to try to do, like sometimes do actual plays or of what we do. Uh, but I think it would be fun to have someone somewhere um, do actual plays of our games And I, I will, I will certainly look, I will certainly look forward to it because there's some interesting stuff that you that you guys have in store. But with all of that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to my show and enjoy the madness at play here. I mean, it's always fun to speak about things mm-hmm. and just, I've, I mean, I, I find it fun. So it's it's different than just working on on games or working at a day job <laughs> so it's a fun little things that i enjoy sometimes to join in on interviews and just speak about things yeah i can i can get that and and of course anytime you see fit to return whether it's to whether it's to further Cover cover um the development of Last Hope, Arkelian Chronicles, or just to just just to just to um make fun of Leafs fans again. <laughs> the <laughs> door is always open. And by by the way, if in, if anybody listening to this hap- happens to be a Maple Leafs fan and I've offended you, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm not. <laughs> oh, but as I always say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks to, goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>